Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be playing Homeschool Mom Tag. Michelle Kasky from homeschoolyourboys.com tagged me in her video that she just published yesterday. And what it is, is it's just a little game that we have to answer 10 questions about ourselves to get our viewers to know a little bit more about us. And then at the end, we tag three more homeschool moms who have channels. And that way, you know, you guys get to know more about them and their viewers that they already have get to learn more about them. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. My daughter, Kaylin, wants to ask me the questions. So we're going to get started. Were you homeschooled? Was I homeschooled? No, I was not. I don't think my parents ever even heard of homeschooling. I know I didn't hear of homeschooling when I was a kid. I didn't hear about it for the first time until I was an adult, but I think I would have liked it. Did you always know you'd homeschool your children? Did I always know that, I'm, that I'd homeschool my children? Um, no, I didn't because... Again, I did not ever hear of homeschooling until I was an adult. I already had, I think, three kids when I first heard of homeschooling. My oldest son was about seven, and um, I just heard about it in passing. A coworker told me that she was homeschooled, and I didn't really ask her about it. You know, I just, for some reason, I just didn't even give it a second thought. I didn't actually start really seriously thinking about it until my oldest son, who is now 23, he was in middle school. And he wanted me to homeschool them. So that was when I actually started looking into it. So I didn't start homeschooling until my oldest son was in ninth grade. So, Name your three favorite books in your homeschool library. My three favorite books in my homeschool library. Okay. Oddly enough, they are not curriculum books that I'm going to mention. But I'm a big bookworm and I really like to read anything homeschooling or education related. So... My two favorite authors about education and homeschooling are John Holt and John Taylor Gatto. Um, it's hard to come up with just three because they have so many great books. But John Holt, Learning All the Time, that was the first John Holt book that I ever read. And that completely transformed the way that I look at learning, completely. Um, the second one is also by John Holt. It's Teach Your Own, the John Holt Book of Homeschooling. That's another phenomenal homeschooling book that I'd recommend to anyone. And the third one was, well, is by John Taylor Gatto. It's called Deming Us Down, The Hidden Curriculum of Compulsory Schooling. That book really changed my view on public education. I, growing up, I really liked school, you know. I just, I knew how to do well at it, and it was just something that, I don't know, I, I was good at it. So I really liked it. You know, who doesn't like to do what they're good at? But as I read this book, I, just so many things that happened, not just with my own kids in school, but with myself, it just resonated with me and it hit me. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's so true. So yeah, dumbing us down the hidden, the hidden, oh my gosh, dumbing us down the hidden curriculum of compulsory schooling. There you go. That really changed my views of public education. I will never look at it the same way again. So those are my, I'd have to say my three favorites, but I have lots more. Are you the only teacher? Am I the only teacher? Yes. Um, I do not use tutors. Um, my husband, he, he does help out occasionally, not not on purpose. Um, it's not like he'll say, okay, I'm going to come in and teach a lesson. It's not like that. I, I'm one of those people that I like to see learning in everything. So, you know, when my kids are helping him to paint, you know, say the kitchen, or if they're helping him to tune up the car, um, my, my, my daughter went down and helped him. Well, she didn't help him, but she watched him rewire some outlets and everything. And so he really does expose the kids to things that way um really useful things that a lot of kids in school don't get exposed to and he actually yes he did once dissect a cow eyeball with my kids because i refused to touch it so yeah he, he did do that but for the most part no i i am definitely i'm the only teacher no tutors nothing at all like that no no outside classes unless you count occasionally my kids will take art classes but that's just once in a while, so. Where is your favorite place to buy homeschool curriculum? 
My favorite place to buy homeschool curriculum is, I really don't like to buy it. <laughs> I like to use the library, but if I have to, my favorite places that I go to are Amazon because you can find some really great prices on used curriculum there. And I also really like Rainbow Resources. They have really good prices on their curriculum also. Do you have a set budget for your homeschool? Do I have a set budget for my homeschool? No. The reason that I don't have a set budget for my homeschool is because I try to find everything for free or as low cost as possible. So I think that budgeting isn't really something that's been necessary for me because I've never been one who will just throw money around on curriculum. I'm very particular. I try to get things for as cheap as possible or free. So budgeting has never really been an issue with me. So. What are two must have homeschool supplies? Two must have homeschool supplies. I found that I'm a lot like Michelle Kasky um, in her homeschool tag. She, she said library card and a printer, which is exactly what I was going to say. So I'll change it up a little bit. Um, I'm still gonna say the library card because the library is my number one resource for homeschooling, so I can't take that out. But instead of printer, I will say um, having access to the internet because there are so many great things on the internet. There's you know educational websites, you have access to Netflix and YouTube, and yeah, those are all things. And also all those free printables. I mean, yeah, of course, you need the internet. What's your favorite and least favorite subjects to teach? My favorite and least favorite subjects to teach. Um, I'm gonna have to say that my favorite is history now because when I was in school, I hated history because we had to read the stuff in textbooks and they would assign sections for us to take home and read and I would read it and not absorb anything because I thought it was so boring. But I use living books with my kids and I have developed such a love of history. I just really get excited about, and it, it's not even any certain time periods. I'm finding that I love all history. And it's really because of living books. So I can't even really say that I teach it to them. I pretty much share it with them. We read it together. We discuss it afterwards. But yeah, history is my favorite thing to do with my kids. Um, my least favorite is math. Um, my kids tend to get frustrated easily with math. And I do too, just because I was kind of a nerd when I was in school. So all of that stuff came easily to me. So when my kids don't get it right away, sometimes I'm like, oh, why can't they get this? Why is this so hard for them? This is easy. And it's hard for me to understand that just because it was easy for me doesn't mean that it's going to be easy for everyone. So that is something that, so yeah, I don't look forward to, to doing math with my kids, especially higher math, like geometry, just no, <laughs> I don't like it at all. I do it because I have to, but I don't like it. Are you involved in co-ops or homeschool groups? Okay. Am I involved in co-ops or homeschool groups? I have never been involved in a co-op. Um, several years ago, I actually did ask my older kids. Um, I, a lot of people at my church, we have a lot of homeschoolers at our church, and a lot of people at my church go to a co-op that's really great and really highly recommended. And I had asked my kids a few years ago if they would like to do that. And they actually said no because the co-op environment to them, now we've never actually visited, but um, the person that we were talking to, she was telling us what it was like. And they thought that it sounded too much like school. So they really wanted to avoid that. And they said that they wanted me to teach them. So that was like a compliment to me that they'd rather have me teach them. So I was okay with that. As for homeschool groups, I am in, my church has a homeschool group. It's a bunch of really lovely ladies, and it's the homeschool group is small, so I really like that. There's a lot of intimacy, and I think that my homeschool style is a lot more relaxed than most of the people in my homeschool group, so I think that sometimes when I say stuff about what we're doing, they're probably like, ah, but no, they're, they're all a bunch of, they're really great, great ladies. What has been your experience in these groups? My experience in the groups, just 
yeah, it's, it's nice having that support. I really like having people that I can talk to about homeschooling in person. You know, I talk to a lot of people online on my blog about homeschooling. I write about it all the time. But I think everyone needs to talk to, like, real-life people sometimes. And my husband, he gets kind of sick and tired of hearing about homeschooling, just like I get sick of hearing about World of Warcraft from him. So, yeah, it's nice to have people to talk to. What is your approach? Charlotte Mason, eclectic? classical, etc. What is my approach? My homeschool approach I would call relaxed eclectic because I'm very simple. Um, I don't I, I don't teach my kids like nine different subjects a day. I keep things as simple as possible and I pull a lot of different um, methods in from different homeschooling philosophies. We use a lot of Charlotte Mason. Um, living books are like my favorite thing in homeschooling. So we do a lot of Charlotte Mason, but we also have, I have a lot of unschooling philosophies in that I really see the value of playing, um, playing as learning, especially with younger kids. So I have a lot of unschooling philosophies in there. So you will find days that I'm, that I will just do reading maybe and math with my kids and I will give them the rest of the day to just, you know, do what they want to do. So I think relaxed eclectic is the best way. And and unit studies. I, I really use unit studies a lot too. It's great having a, a large family. They come in really handy. So is that the last question, Kaylin? Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the questions. Um, if you have any other questions that you'd like to ask me, leave a comment. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and if even if you want to tell me about yourself in the comment, I'd really like to hear that too. And I am going to tag... Emily Copeland from Table Life Blog, Jen McKinnon from Practical by Default, and Susan Evans from SusanEvans.com. So hopefully they will want to do this too, and they will answer these questions, and you guys will get to see what they have to say too. And I'm going to leave um, links at, in the description box to their channels just in case you want to watch theirs also. So I hope you have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed it.